My name is Kim Cape, General Secretary at the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry, and I look forward to our conversation today. Let's begin with prayer. Gracious God, we gather in thanksgiving for your gifts of life and learning, for the gift of community, for friends near and far. We are grateful for each other and the encouragement and strength we draw from each other today and every day. We pray for your spirit to enliven our work and our play. Awaken us each day with joy in asking what new thing will I learn today? What gifts can I share? May we delight in the truth of others today and every day. In the name of Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. Amen. As we get started today, please remember that the paragraph numbers refer to those that are cited in the current draft of the 2012 discipline posted on GBHEM's website. While we have worked to reflect those accurately, nothing is final until the 2012 discipline is printed. It's our understanding from the publishing house that the 2012 discipline will accurately reflect the Judicial Council's decision. In summary, the Judicial Council decision 1226 has strengthened the relationship between security of appointment and the itineracy. It has restored the security of appointment language to paragraph 331 for elders and paragraph 321 for associate members. Additionally, remember the transitional leave language that passed at General Conference was declared unconstitutional and the language for transitional leave in the 2008 discipline was restored. That means that transitional leave as we know it will remain intact and applies to deacons who are between appointments and elders who are transitioning from extension ministry to another appointment. Remember also that transitional leave is limited to 12 months. One of the goals of the legislation at General Conference was to address the need for appointments to be made in a way that better provides for meeting the mission of the United Methodist Church. Itineracy needs to be open, flexible, and responsive to matching the needs of appointment settings with the gifts and skills of clergy. Through this decision, itineracy has been linked by the Judicial Council to security of appointment in a new way. This actually gives bishops more authority in appointment making. Since this decision reaffirms security of the appointment for elders and associate members, it also helps bishops reclaim the missionary sense of itineracy by requiring elders and associate members to be fully itinerant. Itineracy is intended as a tool for mission. The historic plan for itineracy was a missional plan, a tool to deploy clergy where the population moved. Mission field appointments are a priority. Nowhere does this decision say security of appointment ensures a full-time appointment. Paragraph 338 was amended at General Conference so that bishops may now initiate less than full-time appointments. This is a change. 
paragraph 338.2 says, while full-time service is the norm, at the initiative of the bishop and cabinet, or at his or her request, an elder, provisional elder, or associate member may receive a less than full-time appointment under the conditions stipulated. A clergy member may be appointed in one quarter, one half, or three quarter time increments. The bishop may appoint an ordained elder, provisional member elder, or an associate member to less than full time service. The clergy person shall be notified at least 90 days prior to the annual conference at which the appointment shall be made. Special attention shall be given to ensure that the values of open itineracy are preserved. To be clear, less than full-time appointment was not addressed in Judicial Council Decision 1226, and it is GBHEM's understanding that this new language remains in paragraph 338. Note that while the bishop may now initiate an appointment to less than full-time service, that appointment must be recommended to the clergy executive session by the Board of Ordained Ministry and Cabinet for a two-thirds vote annual approval for up to eight years or a three-quarter annual approval after eight years. Keep in mind, too, that annual conferences now have the responsibility to decide if less than full-time clergy will receive pension benefits. This may impact those serving less than full-time, depending on the policy in your annual conference. While less than full-time appointment is an option for bishops and clergy, our recommendation is that this appointment category is not to be used as an option for exiting or decreasing the workload of ineffective clergy. Additionally, less than full-time appointment is not a cat category to be used for remedial action against a clergy person. In raising this issue, we want bishops and ordained boards of ordained ministry to be aware of their responsibilities and roles as a less than full-time appointment is considered for a clergy person. This takes partnership, this takes planning, this takes cooperation. Concerns around exiting ineffective clergy are also addressed. In the 2012 discipline, administrative process is clearly separated from judicial complaint. This is a change. The process for addressing ineffectiveness is outlined in the paragraph on administrative location, and it is clear that this paragraph is meant to address ineffectiveness. Paragraph 360. When an associate or full member clergy person's effectiveness is in question, the bishop shall identify the concerns, hold supervisory conversations that identify the concerns in a corrective plan of action, and determine after a period of time if the plan of action has been carried out to the point of giving a realistic expectation for future effectiveness. If the process fails to produce sufficient improvement, then a recommendation for administrative location may be initiated by the bishop and the district superintendent. Friends, this is basic HR. There are additional requirements which state that written notification shall be sent to the clergy person and the Board of Ordained Ministry regarding the specifics for recommendation to administrative location. The Conference Relations Committee of the Board of Ordained Ministry shall conduct a fair process hearing, and the Board of Ordained Ministry shall report 
a recommendation to the clergy executive session for final action. GBHEM has a checklist to guide annual conferences through the disposition of a recommendation for involuntary status change. This checklist includes the steps to be taken and the required timelines that must be followed during this process. It is posted at gbhem.org slash bom and we'll show you where that is here. All right, we have pulled up the browser. And to access this checklist, what you will need to do is navigate to gbhem.org slash BOM. And that is the shortcut that takes you to the Board of Ordained Ministry page on the GBHEM website. As you navigate in the right-hand margin, look down, and you will see the second PDF there called Checklist for Recommendation of Involuntary Status Change. Click on that. And that pulls up a PDF that your annual conference can use when your board receives a recommendation for an involuntary change from your bishop or cabinet. What you see posted right now is the form approved by GCFA and by GBHEM for the 2009 quadrennium. That is still there because that is the process we still fall under. Beginning January 1 of 2013, we will update this with the new form for the new quadrennium. I highly recommend that you use this any time your board is working through an involuntary status change recommendation. Because of our continuing concern for clergy effectiveness, GBHEM has been engaged in research for the past 10 years and is now developing a process to assess clergy effectiveness. This assessment process will be for use by bishops, cabinets, clergy, and churches to evaluate pastoral effectiveness in the local church. This will provide a framework for pastors, SPPRCs, and district superintendents to covenant together for setting goals for the evaluation of a pastor's work. This process can be used to establish clear expectations for effective pastoral ministry. Using this process, annual conferences can gauge pastoral effectiveness in a variety of contexts and churches. Pastors and district superintendents will establish covenants and expectations for living out their ministry. We've had initial success with this research in this process, and we are now piloting it in five annual conferences with the hope of launching it to the entire denomination next fall. To summarize, the link between security of appointment and, and itineracy has been renewed and strengthened. Less than full-time appointment has not been addressed by the Judicial Council Decision 1226. The process remains in place that has been clarified to address clergy ineffectiveness. GBHEM is developing an assessment process gauging pastoral effectiveness. While the Judicial Council Decision 1226 has far-reaching implications for appointment making in the United Methodist Church, we believe there is a way forward that is fair, thoughtful, and deliberate to deal with the challenges we face. We have the tools we need to do the work we're called to do. As a reminder, the paragraph numbers we have cited here will not be considered final until the 2012 Book of Discipline is published. And it's our understanding that the changes impacted by this decision will be reflected in the 2012 Book of Discipline. <laughs>